interest in martial arts in this country has really grown. Yeah. Where do you see it going next? Uh, you know, I mean, mixed martial arts is, is it, it is kind of taken over the world because, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, sports and all competitive sports have been kind of a, an alpha measuring tool. You know, it's a, it's, it's a way to, to tell who's the best at something. If an argument comes down, you know, there's a lot of guys, you know, you're watching the basketball court and the guy's like, what? I just dumped over your head. It's like, really? You just put a basketball over the guy's head. And there may be somebody even in the stands that could put you to sleep if, if, if they had to. It's kind of the ultimate alpha measuring tool. And at the end of the day, no matter what sport you're talking about, if an argument ensues, they settle it by having an MMA contest. So it's, it's, it's where all guys gravitate to. The one common denominator in all athletics is there's some capacity of fighting or combat sports. It's just something that, it's something you can't deny. And especially with like our kids program, I always tell the parents, it's, you know, basketball, soccer, football, those are electives. You know, if your child doesn't want to play football, you don't force him to. But if he wants to, certainly you'll let him. Martial arts is different. It's like math. It's a life skill. I really don't care what you're doing in life. At some point, you're going to have to know the fundamentals of math. And at some point, you're going to be required to protect either your own person or those that you love. It's just a product of we live in this kind of culture. So it's really not an elective, I don't think, in anybody's life. It's something that you have to have in your back pocket should you need it. So uh, I don't see it going anywhere but up. I mean, it's, it's, it's already exploded. It's on Fox, for God's sake. You know, you know it's, it's everywhere you look. And uh, we see it with guys walking through the door every day. You know, I'm obsessed with it, and I see that it's, it's contagious. You know, that love of MMA and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it's just really contagious. Having said that, there's a very big difference between a fight gym and a martial arts academy. And right here, we have a martial arts academy. There's an avenue of respect, uh, dignity, integrity that we carry here that might not necessarily be so present in a fight gym. I mean, there's something, there's, there's a philosophy, you know, and, and the concepts that come into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that may or may not be so present in, in a necessary fight gym. So this is very definitively a martial arts gym, but I'm very proud of it, and uh, we have a very open door policy. We have guys coming and going in here all the time. It's, uh, it's always packed, and uh, this has really been the source of my entire peer group you know, for the last 10 years. It just has. All of my social, uh, social aspects of my life take place from here. Whenever I travel, I go on Google. Uh, for example, I'm flying out on the 31st to go and uh, shoot a film in Toronto. I already know exactly... I'm going to train with Jeff Jocelyn in Hamilton. He's got probably the, arguably the best uh, academy in, in Toronto area, and it's not even in Toronto. I'm going to train with him while I'm up there. He's a good buddy. I've already trained at him last time I was there. When I travel out of town, I Google, I find out who's there, and I already know. When I walk in the door, that night of training, I've already got 30 friends. You know, if I've never been to the city before in my life because I'm training, because we have that commonality. You know, so it's a... Uh, it's just a wonderful aspect and wonderful addition to anybody's life. And I'm so sure you've already found out. You know? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time course, man, and uh, for spreading the sport. Let me go get my gear and we'll get our roll on. All right. All right. Hey, guys. So uh, today we'll look at uh, a couple of really fundamental positions. Uh, as I said, I, I got my start at the Hicks and Grace Jiu-Jitsu Academy. So, uh, a lot of the stuff is uh, old school fundamentals, but a lot of times I see a lot of the fundamentals have been lost with the contemporary positions. And a lot of times the new positions are band-aids from holes in your fundamental game. For example, I'll, 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 uh, I'll show you a little something to say for the side control people here. Side control, a lot of the time you'll see a guy in side control here. Hand behind the head's palm down, there's a gable grip. What I want is my elbows to come straight to my hips, and you see side control like this quite a bit, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, this is a common position from side control. The upside is it's very easy for me to contain my partner, but I have to use my hands. Now, that's where the downside comes in. The beauty of any top position is that I'm using my body weight and my positioning to contain my opponent, so I have my hands free to attack my opponent. So the Hicks and Gracie side control is something like this. If I start from here, my hand behind my head, palm down, I'm doing what we call a butterfly switch. So I'm rotating, folding up, grabbing under the armpit, turning. Now talk, talk to me here. You're okay, right? You feel okay? Say, say, say chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich. Okay, now this side control. Say chicken sandwich again. 
Chicken sandwich. It's a very different side control, right? Same thing from here. When I go hip and head, when I have you in this side control, using my hands to contain your upper body, what do I need to make sure that he doesn't replace the guard? I need my knee on your hip, right? So your knee doesn't come in. So that means that I'm on my knees. That means that I can't put weight on you, which means I'm not benefiting from being in the top position, and you're not paying the price from being on the bottom. I'm protecting you from recovering your guard with my knee. So that means all my weight's on my knee. So you're fine down here. You can stay here indefinitely. What I need to do is I need to put my body weight, so I'm transitioning outside the head, and I'm going to bring your ear very close to my knee. This hand is going to the far hip, and I'm posting straight up on your sternum to that side. Will that feel good? And now I have my arms free to start my attacks with chokes, looking for arm locks, and everything else. That's one of the fundamental concepts of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that I find has been lost over the course of, of, of years. And nine times out of ten, you see the side control from here, where guys will literally never go, come off their knees. They're never off their knees, and they're here looking for looking for things, looking for chokes. But you're never paying the price. Right. You're never tired. You're never gassed. You're never anything. Another concept, really quickly, I'll give you from say, uh, let's say bottom bottom half guard. Bottom half guard. Ideally, what I want from bottom half guard when he's flattening me out on my back is I want this underhook. I want this underhook. And a lot of times, there's a lot of trickery you see guys make your grips here. You see a lot of trickery. You see guys that are doing things like this, pry away, swim here, then to get the underhook. That requires a lot of muscle, strength, and explosiveness. I don't know if we're still in the frames back a little bit. The whole concept of jujitsu and its functionality is about cheating. I want to cheat. That's the beauty of the closed guard. The beauty of the closed guard is I'm fighting from the closed guard. I'm fighting with two legs and two hands against the guy that has two hands because he's using his two knees for base. So it's an unfair fight. It's an unfair fight. I can kick, I can sweep, I can use this because I'm fighting with four limbs against two. So the same concept, say, from the bottom half guard. Ideally, what I want, the best position for the bottom half guard is if I have this under. So instead of pushing his face away, swimming the elbow posting and getting under, I'm simply going to make him give me the underhook, which is the beauty of jiu-jitsu in my opinion. So flatten me out here, so he's heavy on me. What I want to do is I want to force him to base out. Now, he has two limbs with which to base if I push him this way. He has this leg, which is already trapped, and this arm. So there's what's called an inside-out half guard and an outside-in. This is an inside-out, meaning my inside leg is outside of his legs. There's also an outside-in half guard, which is this half guard. I want to make sure that I trap that leg with an inside-out. Now I'm going to open my legs, raise my crotch, go very high on his thigh, and pinch down very tightly. So flatten me out here to here. Pinch very tightly with an inside-out. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm simply going to move my hips, and it drives him over. Now it's very easy for him to defend this, but what does he have to do to defend it? Grab me. Don't get swept. There. He bases out. And I have my underhook. That's one of the magic principles of jujitsu. I'm not pushing, prying, and ah, I, gotta, ah, I got this underhook. No, I'm going to make him give it to me. He's very tight. He's very tight. I can't get this underhook. I can't. But what I can do is move him in such a way that forces him to prevent himself from getting swept. And it's that. Now I have my underhook. Now, if he flattens me back out, I have the underhook, I can take his back, I can escape, recover my full closed guard. But those are a couple of the principles, in my opinion, that have been lost with the modern contemporary jiu-jitsu. Because a lot of times guys get flattened out and they have to think of a, of a wonderful way to pry the guy, move him to get that underhook. When, in essence, they've forgotten the principle of jiu-jitsu, is make your opponent defend something else, and in the process of defending something else, he gives you exactly what you're primarily looking for. My opinion, my two cents. Yes. Thank you, brother. Nice to meet y'all.